guys. Welcome to the stack. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. Pete here. And we've got three Newsarama reviews for you guys. Astonishing X-Men number 26, Final Crisis number 3, and Secret Invasion Thor number 1. We're also going to have a viewer mail in a speed round, so let's kick it off with the comics. Starting with Astonishing X-Men number 26. We were pretty hard on the first issue. What did yeah. you guys think about it? It was absolutely uh, uh, a fantastic issue. Really well done. I really feel like it stepped it up from the last issue. A lot of action, a lot of adventure. Of course, the art is just unbelievable. Yeah, um, the panel layouts are really interesting. When uh, Before we talked about uh, Simone's work being uh, a little boxy, a little, yeah, it was little tight. Brady bunched up. And this is definitely, <laughs> it opens it up. Uh, it's really, it's that much That was my better. biggest problem with it, is that it was these tight panels tight to people's heads when they were talking yeah. about big stuff. Yeah. Here, we actually get to see the big stuff. I feel like issue 25 was like, oh, we gotta get through all the setup before we can go yeah. to the an alien is, ship or, graveyard, which is awesome. <laughs> or it could just be an artistic choice to be like, hey, for this issue, let's just work on tight facial stuff, and then the next <laughs> one will be big panels. You know what, Simone Bianchi, work on stuff on your own time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we're buying oh, these comics. My and time. We, you can uh, do no, no this issue is great. It's a huge improvement over the first issue, which I felt was talky, talky, talk, and this was smashy, smashy, smashy. Yeah. Smash. yeah. Uh, there's a great moment where the character Arma, which is so well done, who is who is so well done in this issue, yeah. does the old uh, Cannonball Special with Wolverine, which <sighs> I know you like pissed your pants here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please it's change it, please change So you would say pick it up? <laughs> oh, of course. Death. It's fantastic. Great. Death to the max. Let's move on to talking about Final Crisis number three. Now, before we get into it, as you all know, Pete and I have a million oh. dollar bet that Pete will never read an issue of Final Crisis. If he does read it, he has to give me a million dollars. Fine. Well, of course he didn't read it. He's not going to pay him in dollars. Let's You and I review it, and right, you can take right. a short yeah. nap, and we'll be back with you in a moment. So, uh, with this issue, it... What? Nothing, go ahead, keep talking about it. I'm sure it's a great <laughs> issue. I'm okay, sure it's awesome. here's the deal. The deal is Pete read Final Crisis number three. But because it, you said the bet is off. Right, because, because I the bit, you. The I bit of you. us... Do you understand? No, no, the <laughs> bit of us doing the, uh, hey, I'm going to try to guess uh, what Final Crisis is hap what's yeah, happening. Yeah, it was over and I decided I wanted a million dollars. No, you, you said that the well, bet is off. You called off the bet. Did I? Did we ever shake on it? Oh you called God. off the bet. You can't working. say you tricked me and on camera and be like, hey, I tricked you. You owe me a million dollars. You called off the bet. Did you, you <laughs> Did you read the issue? Did you read the issue? issue? <laughs> yes, because you called off the bet. Cool. Um, this issue is a turning point in Final Crisis. Finally, uh, stuff's starting to come together. It, it's starting to, to look like a whole piece. I'm very excited about it. Pete, you look so wounded right now. I'll... Here's the deal. Give me $250,000. Kiss my ass, ass, man. Fine. That's ridiculous. What did you think of the issue? I'm so lost. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it helped uh, me read the first two issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, oh, what the hell is going on? Uh, <laughs> man, it's... Very encompassing, I'll tell you that much. Uh, everybody's involved. They didn't leave one hero out of this freaking thing. That's true. Uh, um, I was okay with this issue. I've been back and forth on the series, talking to the guy in Midtown Comics. He was like, it all comes together at the end. It all comes together at the end of this issue. And it doesn't quite come together at the end of this issue, but it definitely pulls back the curtain a little bit to let you know what's going on. It's very much, I think, Grant Morrison is writing it, to throw the reader off as much as to throw the superheroes off. That everything, they're like, I don't know what's going on right now. Yeah. So, same thing happened in the heroes. I'm also glad they're dealing with the Flash uh, situation of, of Flash coming yeah, back. Yeah, that's great. And like, yeah, just what, would you say pick up the before. issue? <laughs> no matter how I much it's going to cost you, pick up this issue. I, I would, yeah, I would this, say pick up one, all of them. Yeah, Just don't start at three. That's my say advice. 100,000 now and the next 150 when you can do it. Ridiculous. Let's move on to talk about <laughs> Secret Invasion Thor number one. Uh, what would you guys think about this issue? I like this issue a lot. Uh, there are so many satellite titles for Secret Invasion. Yeah. I'm waiting for Secret Invasion Darkhawk, uh, Secret Invasion <laughs> Slapstick. You know, the real important characters you know for this. They'll be more integral to the event than the main title. Yeah. Indeed. I uh, tricked you into reading this title because we have a comic book show and we have to review comics. So you fell for it. Ha 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 ha. Yes, yeah, Secret Invasion Thor is, it's, I guess it's a great 50, idea. 50,000. This is my final <laughs> offer. Screw you. Um, I feel like it's a, I like the idea of doing like little things to see how it affects other worlds in Marvel, like Asgard and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Uh, that's the only thing I can say that's good about it. Otherwise, it's just like, yeah, we know. The invasion's happening. Everyone's infected. This was all right. I thought this issue was solid but unspectacular. Um, Beta Ray Bill. Yeah, that was a good moment. A much-loved character by me and many other people. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It was Beta a great Bill. moment. Yeah. It's good. It definitely shows what would be happening to Thor during Secret Invasion. It just actually feels, this is totally ridiculous, but feels like the least essential of the tie-ins to me that mm. where big things are happening in all the other titles, this is a smaller story. And what I've been appreciating about the other tie-ins is the bigness of them. Well, I feel like Thor's gonna have a big part in, you know. Yeah. He's a big yeah. gun. Well, his, his silhouette shows up at the end of issue four of Secret Invasion, and oh my God, I was like, holy crap, yeah. Thor's gonna be there. Who would have thought, who invited him to the party? Yeah, yeah. and Captain America, maybe? Oh, oh man. God. This is sarcasm, by the way. After the break, <laughs> we're gonna have a speed round and viewer mail, so stay tuned. That was not sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm trying to communicate with the hosts of the stack via telepathy. Could you please be quiet? I want to tell them I like the show. Sorry. Telepathy is cool and all, but we think uploading a video comment or sending an email to tips at pulpsecret.com is a lot easier. But hey, it's your call. Hey guys, welcome back to the stack. It is time for a speed round. All right, so Justin, kick it off. Iron Man Viva Las Vegas is uh, a much delayed second issue following up on the movie by John Favreau, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's not real essential reading. Uh, the art is different. I wouldn't call it great. Uh, so you don't have to pick this up. Permission granted. <laughs> cool. Criminal number four. Uh, God, Brubaker is just doing amazing stuff on this series. Um, the art is fantastic. It's really well written. This one's kind of a slow burner, which is exciting. You're really just kind of getting an idea of the world and what's going to happen. But still, it's a must read. Very good. Crossed number zero. Of course, I'm on board with anything Garth Ennis is going to write, but... This feels a little generic to me. Obviously, it's only a preview of the series to come, and I love that they do that, but it's okay. Wait for the first issue. Wow. Uh, the 12, number 7. I love this series. Um, it's continuing to get better. Again, it's like a really rich world that you're being invited into. Uh, definitely pick it up. Uh, Hellblazer presents... Charlie, move up the teleprompter. <laughs> You're killing me. Uh, uh, Chaz, the knowledge number two. Uh, this is a really fun issue because it deals with the darkness that is Constantine, but he's on vacation, so he's you know wearing crazy shirts and drinking crazy drinks. But other than that, uh, it's really setting up a it's good a story. Glowing review. Cool. All right, let's move on with a viewer mail. Paulo writes in, what's your opinion on the recent sex changes that several villains have suffered? Interesting choice of words. Examples <laughs> are Loki, Ultron, Kraven, Miss Sinister, and Lady Bullseye coming up. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about this? It's a weird trend that, yeah. that's going yeah. around. And I will say it's already becoming kind of a cliche move. Uh, when Lo they did it with Loki, I was like, oh, that's cool. He's a trickster, his whole thing, and right. he's using it to move forward. Uh, Ultron seemed kind of like, even though that came before, it was kind of like, oh, I get what you're doing. You want a naked woman in your comic. Right, right. Frank Cho, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> Frank Cho must draw women. Yeah, he actually can't. They've asked him to draw men several times, and he's always like, here you go, and you're like, those are naked women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, but that's wrong. Uh, Miss Sinister, I was like, all right. We... Guys, I think you're overlooking the fact that villains are going through a really tough time right now. They don't know who they are, and they're having problems with their sexuality. All right? It's a good I, I, point. I yeah, feel like no, you guys no, that's are... True. I know you want to change their sex. No, we got to be supportive. Let them do that. I know, you know a couple weeks ago you had a tough time, and you added breasts and then later took them off. Which I think I was wish it. you wouldn't bring that up. They My mom watches great. the show. Huh? Yeah, they uh, felt great. Uh, <laughs> they felt oh, really good. They Jeez. felt real. Yeah. Well, thanks. I guess. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think you know, at the point that this has become a trend, they should probably stop. Yeah. Uh, as long as it is done for a specific reason, I think the Loki one works for the yeah. reason that you said. Actually, I'm waiting to see if the Craven one works. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily have a problem with it, especially since Craven's son has been so mishandled I felt as like a the, reboot for the character, and at least they're not bringing Craven back to life. Yeah. Like I, I like the character of Craven, so I'm happy to have him, whoever it is, as long as it works as a character. I, I felt like the Ultron one was a little ridiculous, and yeah. all that top, especially with the smoke covering her boobs at all times when she was walking. It was like, and then they just well, made it silver. Well, when you had those boobs, to be uh, fair. come on with the, <laughs> yeah, there's the always smoke a piece of was hair always covering or, like, it, or your you hand was out of the shower like, and the steam. Hey, if J Lo can do it, I can do it. 
good. <laughs> totally. Let me just say, though, it was great to have my hands on those. <laughs> You're I'm glad we answered that question. If you guys have a question, you can write us at the comic book club at yahoo.com or check us out at youtube.com slash comic book club. You can upload your video responses on YouTube or comment right here below. And if you're ever in New York City, come visit us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Come on down at Comic Is Book Club, a... our live show. Yeah, we will see you guys next crime. Oh, oh. nice. I did that Because the villains the thing at the end. Oh, the man. <laughs> That's a pulp thing you've already heard about. <laughs> Is that a twist? Yeah, no. No? No? no, no, no not as well done. Yeah. Uh, can I get your plastic surgeon? Your phone number? Yeah, sure, definitely. Thank you. Great. It's 1 800 can I Justin. Feel your rest after. As soon as they're there. Awesome. Oh! At the tone, leave a message. We'll get back to you. I think there will still be a lot of print comics, but I think most people will get their weekly fix from digital comics and then buy more graphic novels to have an actual hard copy. In the future, I see most comic books being motion comics like uh, The Watchmen, which was recently released on iTunes. Yeah. I hope that in 10 years there's less focus on continuity and more focus on telling a good story.